a warm welcome to our gathered together this day for our worship service. We have several things going on today. There's an adult confirmation that's taking place. It is also the Sunday of the Passion, as we look at that. It's also Palm Sunday, su Sunday, so we look at that. And it's also the Annunciation to Mary tomorrow. So we look at, you know, there's Christmas hymns that we're singing today, all about the understanding as we realize the coming of our Savior and how God is in the midst of it all. So that will begin singing with our first hymn, number 443. <laughs> of service is either found on page 151 in the hymnal or in the printed bulletin. Please rise. <coughs> <coughs> we have been called here this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done unto them. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ <clears throat> and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. From the prophet Zechariah, we hear about the prophecy concerning our Lord's Palm Sunday entry. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Decla today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of our Lord. Thank you, we continue with the anthem. St. Paul's letter to the Philippians in the second chapter, beginning at the fifth verse, as we hear a description about our Savior and how it is that he became to be one with us. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. We rise and join in singing the Lenten verse in preparation for the reading of our Lord's Gospel.
Holy Gospels according to St. Mark in his 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Note, please note the different parts that are as part of this extended reading of the Passion History from the Gospel of Mark. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, And they cried out again, and Pilate said to them, But they shouted all the more. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him. And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put on his, his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, <clears throat> And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why are you forsaking And some of the bystanders hearing it said, And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, There are also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the Younger and Joseph and Salome. And when he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up to him to Jerusalem. And when evening came, <clears throat> it, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he had, should have already died, and summoning the centurion asked him whether he was already dead. And when he had learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. 
And Joseph brought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in the tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene. <coughs> this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we continue singing with hymn 370. Verse 14 and on we read, But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in my, your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and my persecutors. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. It begins, here it begins our text, dear friends in Christ. <clears throat> what is it that gives you comfort? Is it being with friends and family? Celebrating or something like that? Is it a special meal? You know, like for breakfast, biscuits and gravy or some, something thing like that, and the company you enjoy it with? Or is it that ticket for the mega draw, drawing that, you know, <clears throat> where somebody got a couple numbers right and they won a million dollars out of it, you know? What is it that brings you comfort? Our, our psalm for this day and the, the theme of the day with all three great events taking place of so the Palm Sunday, of the Passion reading, and the, and the uh, Annunciation to Mary, place God in the midst of all of those things. This God, through whom all things were made, became one with his creation, 
in that womb of Mary, assuming to himself human flesh and uniting himself with us. And this one lived and grew and died on the cross for our forgiveness to give us a sign and a signal that God deems to be with us, that he has opened the doorway to it, and that he is always there. Whether we face the joys of this world and the celebrations, or the depth of the lowest of low. Whether it is at the birth of a young child, or at the, at the funeral of the aged. Our God is there in all cases and in all ways, and in that we take comfort because his presence changes everything. Listen as David speaks to these words. In thee, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Listen to me. Rescue me. Speedily. This is not a cry of distress. David here isn't in, in, in desperation going to God. He is instead going to God in a full and complete faith, knowing that God will do and live up to the promises of being his God, that he is going to him asking for him for his aid, his comfort, his deliverance, his help in the time of need. And he knows that God will provide it. He knows that God will be there for him. He understands that God will be his shepherd. He knows all the work that a shepherd has to do, being one himself when he was younger. And now he turns to God and he asks for God <clears throat> to be that one, to help him with a sense of confidence, a sense of certainty, a sense of hope. That is an expectation of God's deliverance. As we come together, as we remember, you know, are going to be, I'm going to ask you to remember your baptismal vows as, as, the, as, as these four go through their confirmation. We're reminding of ourselves that God has bound him to, his, to us and that he has, made, and he has, through the work of his son, has made it possible for us to be his people. And because he has done that, whether we are celebrating or sad, God is there with us. In all things, he is constantly there. We don't have to ask. We know he is, and therefore we can go to him in all boldness and confidence and pray to him and seek his aid and his help and his comfort. Learn from his word about the knowledge that he seeks to give us about what he has done and recount his wondrous gifts in those hymns that we sing and celebrate. Remembering, indeed, that as we join in a little shortly and say, joy to the world, there is a sense of joy in this. There is a sense of celebration of this because we realize God's greatness and deepness of love and action. All of these things our Lord does for us, and all of these things we take comfort in, because we know that God is always there for his people, and his benediction theology is ours. You notice the way the psalmist began, this ends. Let your face shine on, my, on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. <clears throat> God's face as we are reminded in the benediction of the Lord bless you and keep you, is there with us. And as that face and his presence is there with us, we find in it our hope and our confidence in our life. That as we go through this world, we go through not alone, not as others who have no hope, but as a people of hope, founded on our Lord's work, and recognize that in his life, death, and resurrection, we take joy, we take peace, and we celebrate just who our God is. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this point in time, we will continue with the, with the rite of confirmation. So I'm going to ask you all to turn to page 272 in your hymnal. Now, you may notice that the baptismal candle is lit. There's a reason for that. In confirmation, you are confirming those baptismal promises. And as part of your remembrance of your baptism, I'm going to ask you to restate your vows at this time as well as with them. Because in that way, we are all celebrating and recognizing just the special status that God has given us in and through our baptism. Will the confirmands please come forward?
Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. And whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I ask you now in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all of his works? Do you renounce all of his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Wisconsin. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the hope of glory, and the life of God. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God in faith, word, and deed, and to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received the teachings of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please go over the second song. Please kneel. June, your confirmation verse is this. From Paul's letter to Philippians in the first chapter, I am sure of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Chase. <clears throat> Paul writes to the Romans, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Romans 1, 16 through 17. And Robert. Paul also wrote to the Romans in the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And Tessa. From Romans 8, 27 through 28, we read, And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purposes. Okay. 
the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. Please rise for the prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You may take your seats. We continue with the prayers. <clears throat> Let us pray for all people according to their needs. O oh, Holy Spirit, give guidance to our principal Nancy Jankowski and Pastor elect Miller, that as they consider the calls that they have, they may make a decision that you have planned for them to do. Lord, in your mercy, for all mothers with child and all in labor, grant to them a safe delivery. Lord, in your mercy. Grant safe journey to all who travel. Lord, in your mercy. Grant peace to the world and to our land. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give healing to Christy as she recovers from her, cataract, from her surgery. And Lori, who was hospitalized. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, grant strength and healing to John and Bruce, Guy, Dale, Dennis, Peggy, and Eugene. Grant that a kidney transplant may be found soon for Stephen. Lord, in your mercy. For those who deal with the extremes of the weather, Lord, in your mercy. Physician of all, watch over Myra. Give healing to William, Brad, Phil, Karen, and Mildred. And be with Aaron that she may have a full recovery. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, give your relief to those who suffer and deal with the cancer in the many as various ways that it takes place. To this end, we ask that you watch over Brian and Gwen, Trady, Dale, David, Diane, Daniel, David, Patty, Brian, Randy, Donna, Brian, Lois, Kelly, Michael, Jerry, and Steve. Lord, in your mercy, we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the taking of the offering. Please be seated.
please rise <clears throat> and we join in singing the offertory. We continue at the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sakes, he died on the cross and rose from the dead and put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, and your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise for the Nuke Domenis. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated and we continue with hymn 441. Good morning. Good morning. And no, the acolyte did not forget the Christ candle. We have a baptism coming up too, so that's why it's still lit. All right, so let's take a moment to welcome our fellow worshipers as well.
Okay. All right. Um, all right. No having too much fun back there. <laughs> okay. Um, Ian McCarthy, who is our seventh grade teacher, has, has got the uh, school spotlight this day. Okay. Good morning. My name is Mr. McCarthy. I am the seventh grade homeroom teacher and the math teacher Pastor Bob mentions in his sermons sometimes. I am so thankful to God and for you for giving me the opportunity to come here to Kansas and teach here at Hope. I moved here from North Carolina after living there for almost 20 years with my parents Phil and Heather and my older sister Sydney. While in North Carolina, I attended Emanuel Lutheran Church and School. That is where I was first introduced to Mrs. Jankowski. My sister's eighth grade class was actually her first eighth grade class in North Carolina. Uh, I graduated from Appalachian State University in 2021 with a degree in mathematics education and a minor in special education. I originally started in college as an accounting major, but realized after three years, God had a different plan for me. I taught for one and a half years in a North Carolina public middle school. While there, I taught seventh grade science, eighth grade math, and an accelerated eighth grade math. Uh, I was also their middle school wrestling coach. While I enjoyed my time there, I couldn't pass up this opportunity. It has been refreshing working here. I have some amazing coworkers that offer helpful advice and I can joke around with. Not to mention, I also have a boss that used to be my eighth grade teacher. <laughs> wrestling has been a major part of my life. I started wrestling in eighth grade at Emanuel when they had a team where they practiced and just scrimmaged another team. Uh, I honestly wasn't a fan of it. My true passion at that time was basketball. When I graduated eighth grade, I asked Mrs. Jankowski, who was the athletic director at the time, if I could come back and help coach basketball. Uh, she told me that I could as long as I joined the high school wrestling team. So I joined and quickly realized that I would not be able to do both, mainly for the fact that they both fall in the same season and high school sports are, may, are way more difficult than middle school sports. Let's see. Uh, I attended Inca High School, a public high school. While there, I was still able to express my faith in wrestling. Before every match, after our warm-up, we would go to the center of the mat and say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, before tournaments, there would be an FCA member there who would lead us in devotions and a prayer. Over the summer, we would also have wrestling camps where Gardner-Webb University, a Christian college, would come in and hold devotions with us along with teaching us wrestling. And then finally, at App State, our 165-pounder would also lead us in weekly devotions. The last major part of my life has been Appalachian State, or Appalachian Servant Event, sorry, or ASE. My church every summer hosts high schoolers and pastors from Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Minnesota for 12 days. During those 12 days, we travel to different sites around Western North Carolina to help families who are struggling. Our job sites include installing septic tanks, remodeling bathrooms, fixing roofs, which I definitely didn't fall through, and building decks or ramps. We also go to different activities being hosted in the Asheville area. Uh, we also take the senior youth to do laundry for some of their first times. At the end of each day, we have worship time where the students are able to sing and hold devotions. After that, they go up to the altar and they continue to pray. When they're done at the altar, they are able to come and talk to pastors or leaders and talk and pray with them. It always amazes me how fast those 12 days come to an end and how close you can get with people in that short of a time frame. Granted, working hard and struggling together doesn't hurt to build friendships. So, what is happening in the middle school? <laughs> the school recently started its fourth quarter it's hard to believe that we've already, or that we're already 75% of the way through the school year. The students are working on their science fair projects and are going to be working on graphing their data this week. Uh, in social studies, the eighth graders are leading into the Civil War and the seventh graders are learning about the European continent. Both seventh and eighth grade are starting the novel The Giver about relationships between generations. The yearbook staff is finalizing the yearbook this week 
And then uh, in science, the students are learning about solar eclipses and will be able to spend some time outside uh, with the appropriate eyewear to look at it. Also, some of our seventh and eighth graders have been working on the spring play, The Pony Expresso, which will be performed on April 18th at 4.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. And there will be a dinner in between. Last thing that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is what is happening at Hope Lutheran School. So tomorrow, March 25th, from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, we will have a Culver's Spirit Night. Uh, today, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., Hope Lutheran School will be participating in Celebrate the Arts at Lutheran High School. Uh, you can view students' arts and writing at that point. Also, on March 29th and April 1st, we will not have school for Easter celebration. And then on April 2nd, we will kick off our readathon event. Uh, <coughs> this is where students are able to exercise their brains and by tracking how much they read. This fundraiser for our school involves no selling of products, only pledges of sponsorship from family and friends uh, for the number of pages that the sponsored student reads during the specific time period, or it can be a flat donation. Money raised for this, ra money is raised for technology for both church and school. Thank you. Okay. Also, please note the Holy Week services this week, Sun, uh, Easter service next week. Following week, the April 7th, we uh, are supposed to be hearing from our pastor-elect about whether or not he's going to accept the call. And also the 13th of April, remember, that is our canvassing event. And I think we have to realize just how special it is that we have Pastor Cook in our district. He is actually flying to other places to do this workshop and then come back. So we're very fortunate to have him here with us that weekend. So with that, go in peace, serve the Lord.